In this lesson, we'll be looking at Frame.io's integration with Adobe Premiere Pro, and in the next lesson, we'll look at After Effects. In both applications, Frame.io is accessed through an extension panel directly within the app's UI. But first, the extension must be installed from a web page at adobeexchange.com. After logging in using your Adobe ID, a confirmation message will appear at the top of the page that says Extension Acquired. In Premiere Pro, the Frame.io extension is located in the window menu under Extensions. The Frame.io UI appears in a floating panel that can be moved and resized. Most Creative Cloud users will prefer to dock the window by dragging it into an existing panel group. Here, I'm dragging it into the Project panel so that it's in close proximity to the media I'll be working with. I'll resize the panel by dragging it from the top and along the right side. Additionally, if this is a workspace you prefer, you can save it by choosing Save as New Workspace from the Workspaces menu. When working with a Frame.io extension, you have access to the full complement of tools and features that are found in the web version of the app. Projects that you've already created appear in this drop-down menu, and each can be edited by selecting the ellipsis to the right of the project's name. In the window that appears, you can rename a project, delete a project, and choose what level of access you want to grant your collaborators. And speaking of collaborators, my client is a Russian dancer, and I'm working on a highlight reel for her website. From the project menu, I'll click the plus button to add a new project and name the project. I'll leave the permissions the way they are and click Create. I'll then add my client to the project by clicking the Add Collaborator button, entering her email address, then click Add. The next step is to upload the sequence I'm working on. What's really cool is that if you add a timeline marker by pressing the M key twice, you can enter text into the comment field that will appear as a time-stamped comment once the movie has been uploaded to Frame.io. I'll click the Upload button on the toolbar, then choose the item or items that I want uploaded to the project. Choosing Upload Files allows you to upload media files from your Mac or PC's file system. Upload Bin allows you to upload a bin of clips you've created in Premiere's project browser. For example, I created four separate bins to organize all my media for this project. My client wants access to all her dancing shots, so I'll choose this bin from the list and click OK. Every clip in the bin will be uploaded to the project and will be available for her to view, comment on, and download. The third option, Upload Active Sequence, will upload a rendered movie of my edit in progress. You can transcode your sequence into one of two web-friendly formats, or choose a high-quality ProRes option. I'll choose the Web 720 option because my client is overseas and has a slow internet connection. The items listed under Range allow you to output the entire sequence or just a portion of it using timeline in and out markers. I'll be outputting my entire sequence. The Scratch Disk option is just a fancy term for where the movie will be saved on your local hard drive. If you prefer, you can render your movie to any folder on your hard drive by choosing Custom. If you want your collaborators to view your Premiere markers as timestamp comments, make sure this option is enabled. If you want to keep every movie that's been rendered to your Scratch Disk location, then leave this option checked. By unchecking, your rendered movie will be deleted once the movie has been uploaded to Frame.io. Auto-versioning will increment the sequence changes in your project and create a version stack of every version for reference or comparison. I'll be covering version stacks in the next lesson. Clicking Upload will kick off the render using Adobe's Media Encoder before sending the movie along to Frame.io's cloud. Once uploaded, the sequence will appear in the target project as a thumbnail that can be hover scrubbed. Double-clicking the thumbnail will open it in the player. While I'm waiting for my client to respond, I can jump into the comment section to view the comment that was created from my Premiere marker. These comments will appear in real time, making client communication incredibly dynamic. Once she adds her comments, I'll receive a notification, and selecting a comment will bring me to the player where they appear as time-stamped avatars along the bottom of the player. Hovering my pointer over them reveals the comment in its sequential context. What's really helpful is that I can scrub the area directly above the comments and my Premiere Playhead stays in perfect lockstep so I know exactly what shot or frame she wants addressed. 
Clicking on a comment will open the comment list and park my playhead at that specific location in the sequence. Even better, if I know I'll be working where there's no internet connection, I can convert these comments to markers by clicking the Download Comments button, then choosing Import Comments. The comments now appear as timestamp markers right inside my Premiere timeline. I want to address her comment about the first interview shot being too wide, but instead of answering her with just text, I'll use the built-in annotation tool by clicking the player, then choosing the paintbrush icon. Then use the shape tool to define what I think she's looking for. Then add my response in the form of a question. Working this way is not only fast, it's incredibly accurate. Frame.io's Premiere panel is the next best thing to having your actual client sitting in the room right next to you.